Greetings, colleagues and friends. Cambria Evans here, the teaching and learning EMDR consultant in my office in San Jose, California. And y'all, I had to just come on here and share with you today. I have been deep in thought all day on this kind of cozy <laughs> California winter day, uh, deep in thought about what it means to be uh, good versus great. A good parent versus a great parent. Uh, a good teacher versus a great teacher. A uh, good therapist versus a great therapist. And I just happened to find this really incredible uh, Adam Grant uh, Instagram post. And it just, I felt so seen by this post. I felt like it, he just like, I'm like, oh, you get me. <laughs> you get my philosophy. And so I wanted to come on here today and talk about uh, Adam's words, um, how they spoke to me and how I hope they can speak to you right now. And I feel like this conversation is so timely because a lot of us are feeling in the EMDR community very confused, very confused about, you know, what's happening with, uh, EMDRIA and, and, and people leaving EMDRIA like Parnell and Mailberger Institute, um, what's happening with the future of EMDR as uh, brain spotting is coming into the market even more and more and art and other EMDR informed uh, therapy modalities. There's been lots of conversations, kind of uh, hushed whispers. <laughs> and so I wanted to kind of give us a framework to help us anchor into what is happening now. Uh, in the hopes of creating some uh, sense making of, of kind of this this phase of uh, evolution of this phase of um, falling apart and, and rebirth that, that might be happening with EMDR. And I'll, I'll start by saying, you know, before I go into all of that, I'll start by sharing a story. And this is this is a true story. Uh, about what happened to me yesterday. So yesterday we got a phone call from my daughter's school. Y'all know I have five-year-old twin girls. And um, it turns out that one of my girls was in the nurse's office with a stomach ache. And um, come to find out uh, upon further conversation with her after we took her out of school, that someone at her lunch, another kindergartner, told her that the food she was eating was going to kill her and that she was going to die. And she became terrified, right? And there's this whole story about like what was gonna happen to her after she died and obviously she was upset. So so last night was my first night officially doing EMDR on one of my children. Uh, she started at a 10, you know, I'm gonna die literally to, I think I, I, think I got her to like a two or a one uh, last night before bedtime, but it got me thinking about how normal it is to repeat what we hear. This is literally what kids do, right? Even when kids are doing something bad or wrong, often, it, oftentimes they're just repeating something they've heard or seen or a version of it. So my sense is that these other kindergartners, you know, heard some story and repeated it to my, to my daughter. So, it got me thinking about how in the EMDR community, actually, how a lot of us accept, take on, and um, say it's okay to be taught in this framework of like, well, my consultant said so, or my basic training said so, or this trainer said so. And I think what gets confusing for us is when we are in this model of just repeating what we've heard, we tend to kind of back ourselves into a corner, right? So my daughter's five, so she, so where she got stuck last night was like, why would my friends tell me this scary lie, right? And that was a hard thing to unpack with her, right? Because it's, it's a hard thing to, to understand why adults right, do this, why adults kind of repeat what they hear without potentially thinking about the, the consequences or the, the outcome. And it got me thinking about um, how in the EMDR community I am on this mission to empower us as learners, 
as care providers to really think about our um, our role in our learning. And let me say more. You know, we're, we're told in basic training to follow a script and we're told to follow a protocol and we're told there's this AIP model, right? And all of that is, is fine and, and, and makes sense in one way, right? I, I, I think where people get stuck and backed into a corner is when they're following the script or following what Francine said or this person said with a positive intention of doing it right and doing it safely. We, get, we back ourselves into a corner when we don't understand how to hold This person says do this, this person says do this. And these two people have repeated something to us that maybe someone told them was the right way or the safe way or the best way, (laughs) right? And so what I'd like to do is I'd like to call on you to think about what kind of a learner you are. Um, I recently posted in a couple EMDR Facebook groups, I asked people to ask me, you know, what do you want me to talk about on my podcast? What do you want me to think about with you um, to help you do your job in a way that feels safe and effective for you and your clients? And people had a lot of questions about things that were confusing to them, right? In this very sphere I'm talking about of, well, this person says to do it this way and this person says not to, right? This person says, you can't do EMDR on a pregnant person. And this person says, oh, you absolutely can, (laughs) right? This person says, you have to get a sud after this, this, and this. And this person says, you don't. This person says, all I need to do for resourcing is a calm place in a container. And this person says, that's not going to make sense for most of your complex trauma clients. So what are we supposed to do with that? And are you the kind of learner that follows a script, that follows instructions, that does what someone tells you to do? Maybe you are. I've been that kind of learner before, right? And I think coming out through this process now as an EMDR consultant, I have quickly come to find out that that really backs me into a corner. And so what I would like us to try on instead right, is really what Adam Grant's post was all about, this difference between good and great, okay? A lot of us went to good basic trainings, but there's some opportunity to be great, greater, gooder, <laughs> right? So let me, let me read what Adam Grant wrote that, that moved me, and maybe this resonates with you. He says, good teachers introduce new thoughts, <clears throat> Great teachers introduce new ways of thinking, okay? Good teachers care about their subjects. Great teachers care about their students. Good teachers teach us what they know. And great teachers teach us how to learn. Oh, I get chills. I just got chills all over my body. I mean, that in a nutshell is why I have started Zero Disturbance. It's why I do this podcast. It's why I have consultation groups. Like it, this is why I teach in the EMDR community because I, I'm, I would like for us to, as learners, demand from our learning experiences greatness instead of goodness. I want us to demand that we have people teaching us who are introducing new ways of thinking, right? Which is different than a new thought. Here's a thought. Here's an idea. Here's something that was repeated, right? I am calling on the EMDR community to demand, right, that instead of focusing on the subject, right? This is the way that we do it. This is the most important thing that this is done this way (laughs) because it has always been done this way. I'm calling on the EMDR community to think about what it would be like if great teachers cared about their their students instead of their subjects, 
right? Because good teachers care about subjects, great teachers care about students, okay? When I care about one of my consultees, I want to make sure that they understand EMDR, not just that they can repeat what I've, what I've repeated to them. I want to make sure that they have the clinical reasoning skills to be able to be in that place of backed in a corner with this information and this information, right? With this thought and this thought. But because they've had great teachers, right? They have a way to think about how to be with two thoughts that are different from each other, right? Because they have had great teachers, they know that they can think for themselves with their clinical reasoning skills and don't have to secretly do extra resourcing or, you know, secretly modify protocols because it's not the right way to do it, right? Because if, because if we say we're innovating something, it's going to upset somebody, okay? Good teachers teach us what they already know. And great teachers teach us how to learn. My hope is that you will be a learner who values great teaching because someone is teaching you how to learn, teaching you new ways of thinking and knowing that you are cared for, that you have been able to conceptualize and integrate information in a clinical reasoning framework, that you can go do EMDR with your clients. And not just the single incident ones that have like, you know, secure attachment history. Y'all, those are like 5% of my clients, okay? We are talking about ways of thinking to work with different populations, right? Whether it's different based on race, ethnicity, gender orientation, or sexual orientation rather, gender identity, right? Whether it's based on different like levels of um, SES, right? We need to make sure that the theory of EMDR is given to us and then we are able to learn how to think with the theory, right? So I just want to say that, you know, when I was working at Stanford for 14 years and before that I was at Vanderbilt University, never once, not one time, not even in the med school or the hospital, did anybody there whose job in academia was to think and learn how to think and learn how to teach, never one time did someone say to me, we're going to keep doing the same thing we've always been doing forever, and we're not going to innovate it, and we're not going to allow for innovation, and if different ideas come in, then those are bad. I didn't once hear that in academia. And it's really disorienting to be in the EMDR community and hear that now as a professional in my 40s. To hear people, adults, telling other adults, you know, stop challenging these ideas. I want to be in a, a learning community where people can have conversations about clinical techniques and methods without a fear of being shamed or doing it wrong or being bad. Because when we have something as precious and powerful as EMDR. It is our responsibility as scientists, as clinicians, as researchers, to make sure that we respect a theory. And I think there's oftentimes a misinterpretation that respecting a theory means it never changes or evolves with new information, right? I could not imagine the first automobile that was built. I'm guessing it didn't have seatbelts. I don't know. I wasn't there, (laughs) right? But I do know that my husband drives a Tesla. And had it not been allowed for people in the car industry to innovate and evolve and make things safer and better and have more choices for different kinds of people, Teslas wouldn't exist. And we'd all be chugging gas forever and killing the planet right? So I want you to think about, if you are a teacher, I want you to try on this checklist. If you are a teacher, 
which means you have consultees, you are a trainer, you do kind of, you know, uh, teaching in your own um, agency or group practice, whether you're doing CEUs or like advanced EMDR topics, I want you to ask yourself, are you a good teacher or a great teacher, right? Are you introducing new thoughts or are you introducing new ways of thinking? Are you attached to the subject and the content material or is your focus as a great teacher to care about your students and making sure that they learn and can utilize the information to go and actually help people? Because that is why we are all here, lest we not forget. So this third component of good teachers teach us what they know. As a teacher, it is your responsibility to make sure that you keep learning. And when, as a teacher, we say, well, here's this thing I learned and now I'm done and I'm just gonna keep repeating this, you stop yourself from being great. And in a clinical community where there's actual people with mental health crises going on in a pandemic, I would say you're actually even being dangerous, okay? And as a learner, maybe you're not in a teaching role formally, okay? But as a learner, are you taking responsibility Mm -hmm. for your learning experience with your mentors, consultants, trainers, informal teachers in your life. Responsibility meaning, are you making sure that whoever is giving you information is also giving you a new way of thinking? A clinical reasoning brain is different than a brain that has a bunch of manuals that can just repeat a script or a protocol, right? If you are a learner, Can you make sure that your teacher cares about you more than making sure the content is rigid? And are you as a learner hearing from your teacher what they know as the right way? Or can you take responsibility to make sure you have a teacher who teaches you how to learn, who can actually say, here's this idea and here's this idea and let's think about the pros and cons, let's think about why this might exist and make sense and what scenarios and why this might exist and what scenarios for different clients. Which is different than a teacher who's like, this person said that, that's bad because that's not what we say, okay? So this movement, I believe, is gonna happen on two sides. It's gonna happen from the teachers. It's gonna happen from the learners. And there is nothing more powerful right, than voting with your feet. And some people in our community have chosen to walk away from Emtria. And that meant something to them, right? I think we also can vote with our feet in terms of selecting the teachers that are great based on Adam Grant's framework, right? Making sure that the market will respond to the great teachers, right? And and walk away from the good ones. So I hope this leaves you with something to think about. I hope this gives you like a way to conceptualize like a framework about what is happening right now in our community. I know a lot of people are just sad about it. I feel sad about it too, y'all. I, I hate drama and politics and power and all that stuff. And, um, you know, I've, I've been doing a lot of comforting of people about this and comforting myself. Um, but I feel hopeful. I feel hopeful that um, it's all, the, the snow globe has been shaken and it's all going to settle where it needs to settle. Um, and if you are somebody who wants to have what I'll call a peaceful <laughs> 2022, um, I would encourage you to think about how you want to create peace for yourself because we have the ability to choose a good teacher or a great teacher right vote with our feet that way in terms of what what trainings and teachers we we work with and support and we also in our own companies and our own practices right have power and agency and choice around how we support and teach and give therapy services to our clients and you know, as somebody who's been talking about EMDR intensives for many, many years and offering them here, uh, I will let you know that there there comes a point where 
the demand for EMDR intensives is so great that you start to even think, okay, how else can I make a little bit of space uh, to teach people in a way, to help people in a way that that still serves me? And so I did want to mention that uh, the Passive Income Kit is going to be coming out February 14th, Valentine's Day next year. We have a launch date. And this is a labor of love. This is literally, this is literally me <laughs> showing you my process for making all of my courses and kits and Kajabi, making my workbooks, taking you from start to finish, uh, from content creation to selling, how to do all of that. And I think that having this as an alternative for our community might help us have a little bit of space from the drama, a little bit of space from the chaos, and a little bit of space from whatever's happening over there. <laughs> Because I'm, I'm staying, I'm staying away from it. Um, but I wanted to come on here and comfort all of you, give you a framework, and give you potentially another alternative uh, about how you might want to be a great teacher, either for your consultees or your learners or your clients. So, with all of that being said, um, thank you for being you. Thank you for doing what you do. Thank you for being so open with me about what you want me to talk about on here and, and you know, the next year, 2022. Um, thank you for um, trusting me to try to help you figure out what's happening in the EMDR community. And um, like all of you, I'm, I'm just feeling really sad about it and, and trying to feel uh, more hopeful about it um, as we get through uh, this phase of transition. So with all of that being said, uh, I'm rooting for your success. Uh, it is the winter time. I know we're all really busy and probably a little tired. So I'm going to trust you that you are taking space uh, and time for yourself. And um, yeah, in the meantime, until we're together next, be safe, healthy, and take care.